Good morning, beloved. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are most welcome here at the First Congregational Church of Crystal Lake, where together we listen for the word of God and strive to walk in the way of Jesus, loving God, loving others, and loving ourselves with every ounce of our being. And so if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. If you have been a member for years, welcome back home. Beloved, as we gather together, we truly become the body of Christ. And today, we have a really special worship for you. Today, we have our first in years summer cantata, a virtual cantata, that our director of music, Ann Tucker, along with so many of our youth, with the help and cooperation of their parents, have put together. It's called a Sailor's Bible. I know that you're going to enjoy it. It's truly spectacular. So let us join our hearts in joyful anticipation as we worship God together with this morning's opening hymn.
you please join with me in the great commandment and the Lord's Prayer? They asked, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus answered, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You shall put these words on your heart and on your soul, and you shall teach them to your children. Hear us, O God, as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, as we come to this time of offering, we remember that all that we do is by the grace of God. And if you would like to support the ministry of the First Congregational Church, ministry that provides things like this amazing summer cantata that we are about to enjoy and be led in worship, then you can do so in several different ways. You can go online to fcc-cl.org slash donate. You can also text FCCCL donate to 77977, or you can send a donation in to the First Congregational Church of Crystal Lake at 461 Pearson Street, Crystal Lake, Illinois 60014. And beloved, through the month of August, we have been collecting donations for one of the special offerings of the United Church of Christ, One Great Hour of Sharing. Now, One Great Hour of Sharing makes life-changing impacts all around the world, from caring for refugees who have lost their homes either through natural disaster or through conflict and war, to helping build up communities that are in need of microloans and that assistant, to also supporting peacemaking efforts in all of those areas of the world. Beloved, if you are like me, and you listen or watch the news and you hear these stories around the world of so many needs in addition to the great pandemic we are facing. And you wonder, what, what can I do? How can I make an impact? Well, beloved, you can make an impact by donating to the ministry of One Great Hour of Sharing. Now, you can do that, again, by going to our website, fcc-cl.org slash O-G-H-S. Or you can send in a donation to the First Congregational Church, but be sure to write One Great Hour of Sharing either in a note or in the memo line so we can make sure that it gets to that important ministry. And you can send that donation to the First Congregational Church at 461 Pearson Street, Crystal Lake, Illinois, 60014. Beloved, we're going to watch a video to tell you just a little bit more about the incredible impact that your gift to One Great Hour of Sharing will make. In Haiti, there's a saying, after mountains, more mountains, and it's true. After an earthquake, then a hurricane where crops are destroyed, homes swept away, loved ones lost. After mountains, more mountains, but here, among the people of Haiti, it's also true that there is hope. And after hope, more hope. Hope in a community that pools its resources to build a school and to pay teachers a living wage. Hope in a small business co-op where women build a bakery, making bread for their families and for sale in the market. Hope in an agricultural co-op that gave Fort Toulouse a low interest loan so he could reseed his farm. Instead of struggling to pay off high interest rates, Fort Toulouse is able to focus on planting vegetables for his family and trees that will one day reforest a nation. Your gift to One Great Hour of Sharing supports communities across Haiti where people are coming together to be there for one another. So come, be a part of the movement. One Great Hour of Sharing is here, which means you are here. And when you are here, 
there is hope. And after hope, more hope. Good morning, beloved. It's good to be with you on this beautiful new day in God's creation. As we prepare to lift our prayers and offer our hearts to God, a few joys and concerns from within our community. First, we celebrate today with Kim Hankins that her sister and her brother-in-law are both doing well recovering from COVID-19. Kim's sister seems to be on the other side of things, and her brother-in-law has been brought home from the hospital, and we are so, so grateful and share in Kim's joy. We also celebrate with Lori Renslow that her niece delivered a healthy baby last week. Both mom and baby Lennon are doing quite well. We pray today with Larry Dagley, whose son is in a time of healing and of life transition, and so we ask that his healing and his movement into new things would continue. We pray with Paul and Joe Voigt. Paul had heart surgery this past Thursday. At the time this video was recorded, Paul was just about to enter surgery. If we have any updates that we are able to share, we will share them in the comments of this video on Facebook, and we will share them on our prayer page at the church website. And as we think about those with heart procedures upcoming, we also pray with Leo Goss, who has a procedure uh, coming up on August 31st. Friends, would you pray with me? Good and gracious God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom, we praise your blessed name. And we come to you in this moment to pray for the sake of your good creation, your people, your church. We pray for the earth that you created and called good, for all the living things that fly through the air and crawl on the ground, for its oceans and rivers, lakes and seas, for the soil and the air, created as we are to bear witness to your delight and to be caretakers of every molecule of it, we ask that you would help us ensure that this earth will be conserved so that this and all future generations may glory in the wonder of your handiwork to the thriving of every living thing. We pray for the nations of this earth and their leaders that they may welcome wise counsel to combat the spread of coronavirus and all such challenges that affect all nations without boundaries. May the leaders of this nation's governments, federal, state, and municipal, model a leadership of humility and cooperation, a constructive leadership that equips citizens and communities and businesses to work for the common good, the public good. Work for things like adequate health care, fair housing in neighborhoods that are safe, work that makes an impact and provides dignified living, nourishing food, quality education, a compassionate hand to those in need. We pray for marginalized communities and ask that all your children may celebrate with holy pride the ways that they reflect the image of you, their creator, in their orientations and identities, their race and their relations. May each beloved of yours learn to embrace themselves and to embrace their siblings to your great glory and your great love. We pray for all in the grip of prejudice in our hometowns and around the world. We ask that the victims of racist, sexist, ageist, ableist, xenophobic, homophobic ideas and policies would be spared the damage that these do to the spirit, that you could continue to enliven the people of this world to resist the distortions that broken systems so often teach us in the workplace, in the hospital, in the classroom, on the street, in the church. Help us instead to realize the promise of creation. One humanity, created in your image, tasked simply and profoundly to care. 
We pray for the sick, whether in body, mind, or spirit, that they may find the healing and flourishing they need. And when physical healing does not come, we pray for the grieving, that they may know the comfort of your spirit in the face of all loss. For those who grieve other losses, who do not know where they will sleep tonight, where they will work tomorrow, from where the next meal will come, grant sustenance and rest in the form of clothing and compassionate hand and shelter and in the form of courageous hearts and minds that seek a way to a future in which everyone has all they need. We pray all this and so much more in the name of your Son, our brother, Jesus the Christ. Amen. some help from our fabulous accompanist, Mrs. Thorson. Hi there! So pay attention and enjoy yourselves. A long, long time ago, God looked over the face of the earth and discovered human beings weren't doing too well. The Bible says, every imagination of the thoughts of their hearts was evil continually. Which is another way of saying, people were acting nasty. Hold it! I'm sorry but you are enjoying that way too much. Now all that nastiness is making Earth itself pretty nasty. So God decided to wipe everything off the face of the Earth and start over. Now the one bright spot in the story is a couple named Mr. and Mrs. Noah. The Bible says that Noah was somebody who walked with God. So God spoke to Noah and asked him to build a great big boat. Called an ark. I would go for one which I guess is another name for hickory, and not a description of how he had to get it. Get it? Go for wood? Go for the wood? <laughs> Sorry, folks. They're not going to get any better. Noah and his family went right to work. 
and pretty soon, their neighbors started to wonder what was going on. Hey, Noah, what the heck are you doing? You like it? It's our new boat. You're building a boat a hundred miles away from the ocean? Well, it's a hundred miles now, but wait till it starts to rain. Let me get this straight. You think it's going to rain so hard, this great big homemade thing here is going to flow? That's what God said. Oh, your God told you to do it? Well, that's different then. Yeah, they're not stupid. They're crazy. I gotta ask, do you all agree with Mama and Papa Fruitcake here? That's amazing. An entire family tree that produces nuts? <laughs> <laughs> and with that, the neighbors really began to make fun of Noah. Hey there, Noah, what kind of feather brain builds up? Remember that. The next time a door closes in your life, it's probably for your own safety. And just about then, it started to rain. Most people know about the 40 days and nights of rain. But what you may not know is that that was just the beginning. 
The Bible says the waters covered the earth for 150 days. Uh, Yeah, things got tough. on the top of Mount Ararat in Turkey. It must have seemed like the worst was over. But do you know they had to wait another seven months and ten days inside the ark as the land slowly dried off? Uh, 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 Until at last, 375 days after God sealed them in the ark, God said to them, Go forth, be fruitful. And... Three times six is 18. Four times seven is 25. Five times eight is 40. And multiply. Uh, 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 Terrible. Told you they wouldn't get any better. Once they got out of the boat, Noah built an altar to the Lord. And they all gathered around and gave thanks. You know, God was touched. Because God put a rainbow in the clouds and made a promise.
dark and stormy, we can look up and see the sign God placed in the sky to remind us Chapter 2, the story of Jonah and the great fish. Once again, we'll need some help from the audience. Whenever you hear the word storm, we'd like you to make two flashes of lightning, like this. Let's try it. Storm. Good. Now, right after those flashes of lightning, I want you to make two booms of thunder, like this. Boom, boom. So we'll see, flash, flash, and then we'll hear boom, boom. Let's put it together. Storm. I think we're ready to begin. Many years ago, there was a prophet named Jonah who had his very own book of the Bible. Now, you might think that someone like this would be a hero, but... You'd be wrong. Hey! In fact, Jonah was a guy with an attitude problem. What? An attitude problem? Definitely. I do not you big fat lying boo-boo head. See? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. And if you say I do, I'll hold my breath until I pass out. One day, God spoke to Jonah. And said, Go to Nineveh. Ah, you don't have to shout. Are you sure? Because it really didn't look like you were listening. Well, why do I have to go to Nineveh? The people there are nasty. And God said, Preach to them. Okay, okay, I get it. But Jonah really didn't want to go. So instead, he knelt down. Oh God, let my words rise up to you like a song sung by a fire. The people in Nineveh cross the sea. They don't love you, they're not like me. Besides, there's things I'd rather do. Just let me name a few. I'd rather swim in boiling oil or set myself on fire.
out into the ocean and looked for a ship that was about to set sail. What are you there, matey? And where might you be heading? Um, uh, I'm not sure. Oh, that way. Well, then welcome aboard. Yes, Jonah tried to run away from God. But he forgot one tiny little detail. What? God is everywhere. Stop doing that. So it was really silly to try to run away. As soon as the ship was out to sea, the Lord sent a mighty wind. Get ready, everybody. And the wind caused a great big storm. when he thought it had to stop. It stormed some more! Finally, the crew began to wonder if there was someone on the boat who had done something wrong. And that's what was causing the terrible... weather. Well, it didn't take the sailors very long to figure out who was causing the problem? Eeny, meeny, miny, Jonah. Where do you come from? What are you doing here? Why is this happening to us? All right, all right. It's my fault. I worship the Lord, the God of heavens, the one who made the oceans and the dry lands. And the Lord asked me to do something, and I tried to run away. Oh. oh. So what do we got to do to stop the storm? I'm afraid you have to throw me overboard. Ow. 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 That, wow, that's harsh. Tell me about it. The sailors didn't really want to toss Jonah into the sea, so instead they tried to row the boat back to land. But the wind blew stronger and stronger. So the sailors rowed harder. The ocean got rougher and rougher. So the sailors rode harder. But the waves grew bigger and bigger. Until finally, the sailors had to take hold of Jonah and throw him overboard. <laughs> Immediately, the storm stopped. stopped. Now, that would have been the end of Jonah right there. But just then, God gave the command, and the prophet was swallowed by a giant whale. Actually, the Bible says it was a huge fish. What's the difference? Well, for one thing, a whale isn't a fish. It's a mammal. Who cares? It's important to be accurate. This is scripture, after all. Yeah, but it's not a science lesson. It's a story about grace and forgiveness. It's a story about truth and obedience. Grace and forgiveness. Truth and obedience. Forgiveness. Obedience. Whoa, hold on a minute. You can't argue like that in front of this audience. Why not? Because there are church people out there and church people never argue about silly things like that. Oh. Sorry, you're right. Next time, argue about something important, like what kind of music to sing. Okay. Now, where were we? Oh yeah, Jonah was swallowed up by a large aquatic creature. And he soon found himself sitting in the belly of that giant animal. It was obvious now that running away from the Lord was not such a great idea. He was still alive, but he was all alone in the dark and far away from everyone he loved and everything he knew. In fact, he was trapped there for three days and three nights until at last he called out to God. Try.
God heard Jonah's prayer and commanded the great fish to release the prophet. And with that, the fish spit Jonah up onto the beach. Trust me, you don't want to see this. Uh, <coughs> oh, I gotta say, the hard part of the story better be over. What's next? And God said, Go to the city of Nineveh. Gee, you asked so nicely. How can I say no? So this time, Jonah obeyed the Lord and headed to the great city. But even though God had saved Jonah, Jonah still didn't want God to save the people of Nineveh. I'm telling you, they're really, really nasty. Now, it's sad to say, but Jonah was right. The city was filled with people who were behaving very badly. people of Nineveh were saved. It's not fair. There's just a bunch of weird foreigners. I wanted God to destroy them. Sorry. God cares for everyone. No matter who they are. No matter what they've done. No matter where they're from. So maybe God wants you to preach to someone new. You have got to be kidding. And God said, Amen. Okay, okay, I'm going, I'm going. Chapter 3, the story of Paul Shipwreck. Once there was a man named Paul. I am named Paul. He was a follower of Jesus. I am a follower of Jesus. He traveled all over the world. I travel all over the world. 
He told people that Jesus was the Son of God. Hey everybody, Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, I think they get the point. Okay, they get the point. Sorry. Now, there were some religious leaders that didn't like what Paul was saying about Jesus. <laughs> In fact, they got so mad that they had Paul thrown into prison. Bring on the prison. The prison was strong. There was no hope of escape. It's useless. These bars are as thick as cookies. Paul was locked away for a long, long time. Two and a half years. And all during that time, Paul told people about Jesus. Hey, psst, Mr. Carr. Who, me? Yeah, you want to hear something wonderful? Yes, Paul even preached to his jailers. Wow. He just loved to preach the good news. Paul in prison. While he was there one day, he came to a decision. I have come to a decision. He decided to send Paul to the city of Rome to see the emperor. I have decided to send Paul to the city of Rome. Okay, you too? What is this? If we repeat what you say, we don't have to learn as many lines. And we didn't have a lot of time. Hmm. Seriously? Seriously? Oh, brother. Oh, brother. And with that... And with that... The governor stopped repeating and had Paul taken out of the prison and loaded onto the sailing ship. Bring on the ship! The ship swayed back and forth on the balls of its feet in order to simulate a swaying motion. As it rode on the 
They had their fearless captain on board. Ahoy, captain. Along with the centurion, that's a Roman army commander. His name was Julius. Ahoy, Julius. They hadn't gone too far when they had to switch to a different ship. The new ship's way continued to sail toward Rome, but the wind was against them, but so they traveled slowly. In fact, as winter approached, they were less than halfway to their destination. Now, winter was a season of storms, and Paul advised the captain and Julius to stop the voyage. If we go on now, you could lose some cargo, you could lose the ship, you could even lose your life. But they ignored Paul's warning and continued on the journey. Don't worry, what does a preacher know about sailing a ship? Yeah, what could go wrong? Yes, they hadn't gone far when the weather began to change. The ship was driven far off course by the storm. We couldn't see the sun or the stars for many days. The sailors on board finally gave up all hope. And one night, angel came to Paul in a dream. Do not be afraid, Paul. God has promised one day you will speak the truth to the mightiest king on earth. words like this. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can trouble or hardship? Can persecution or hunger? Can poverty or danger or death? No, in all these things we have complete victory through him who loved us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Well, there you have it. Three tales of rescue at sea. Three stories about God who saved. And I hope you can see, wherever the voyage ahead takes us, on calm seas or dark waters, we are never alone in the journey. And that's something we can all celebrate. Crystal Lake, Illinois. Hello, my name is Lily. I am 10 years old. I live in Crystal Lake and I play Mrs. Noah and Governor Festus. My name is Greta Knott. I'm 11 years old. I live in Crystal Lake and I play Neighbor One, Sailor Four, and High Priest. Hi, my name is Joaquin. I am 12 years old, and I played multiple parts. Hi, I'm Lauren Tindall. I'm 12 years old. I play Storyteller 7 and I'm from Crystal Lake. Hi, I'm Kate. I live in North Carolina. I'm age 14, and I played the part of Storyteller 3. My name is Beatrice. I'm 14. I live in Crystal Lake, and I played the captain in Storyteller 4. Hi, I'm Mateo. I'm 14. Uh, I live in Crystal Lake, and I play God. Hi, I'm Kaylee Dietrich. I'm 14 years old, and I live in Crystal Lake, Illinois, and I've played Storyteller 6. Hi, my name is Adam. I'm 15 years old, and I live in Crystal Lake, Illinois, and I've played Storyteller 5. We can trust the My cat 
the little kitten just went on the keys of the piano. You have got a chubby kitten. And God said, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, uh, now, Lydia, would you take your background off and let's do this scene one more time. And God, could you be a little bit more uh, emphatic with your line? <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Bye. Beloved, God is good. Wow, what an amazing cantata. I want to especially thank not only all of the kids and their parents who brought that good news to us today, but a special thank you to two individuals who, uh, again, went above and beyond as always, to Ann Tucker, our director of music, and to Barb Thorson as well, our amazing organist. But I also know that there are so many other volunteers that have helped out with this cantata, and we are so so grateful for their support and their help. And so, beloved, hear these words of good news. Go forth into the world and be of good courage. For though you head out on life's choppy seas, know that God is with you and God is within you. Know that the love and grace of God hold you close this day and every day. So go forth, living into that kingdom of God, sharing that love and grace, not only with yourself, but with every person that you meet through your words and actions. And by doing so, proclaiming the good news and the joy and the love of God. Go in peace. Amen.